In this video, we're going to be doing an applied optimization problem, and we've been told that a business can sell X gadgets at P of X equals 250 minus 0.01 X dollars per gadget. So in other words, this P of X function here models the price of each gadget. We also know that it costs the company C of X equals 1,000 plus 25 X dollars to make X gadgets. So in other words, if they make X gadgets, this is the function that models how much it costs them to make that number of gadgets. We've been asked then to find the production production level, in other words, how many the company should make, and the sale price of each gadget that maximize profit. So as with any optimization problem, sometimes the question can be long and confusing. The first thing you want to zero in on is this maximize minimize word here. And in this case, what we can see is that we've been asked to maximize profit. So we're just going to go ahead and underline that because that's going to be super important. We need to maximize profit. Well, because we need to maximize profit, we're going to need a function for profit. So how do we generate a function for profit? Well, we should know that profit is always equal to revenue minus cost. So if you think about it, if I build something and it costs me $10 to build it and I sell it for $15, my revenue is $15, my cost is $10. So when I take $15 minus $10, I get $5. That's my profit. I sold it for 15, but it only cost me 10 to make, which means that at the end of the day, I walk away with a profit of $5. So profit is always revenue minus cost. More specifically, revenue is always going to be the number of things that we sell multiplied by the price that we sell them for. So in that example, I sold one thing for $10, quantity times price, so I get one times 10, or 10, my total revenue is $10. But if I sell four of them at $10 each, I would plug in four for X, 10 for the price here, and I'd get a total revenue of 40. So we're gonna be using these formulas to generate a function for profit, and we're gonna need a function for profit because we've been asked to maximize profit. So generating a function for profit. Well, if we start with revenue and cost, we've already been given a cost function here, so we'll be able to plug that in for C of X directly. What about the revenue function? Well, we've been told that the business is going to sell X gadgets at a price of P of X equals this function here. In other words, we've been given X and P of X here. So let's first go ahead and write our revenue function. So revenue R of X is going to be equal to x times p of x. In other words, how many they sell. They're going to be selling x gadgets, so we go ahead and leave that as x, at a price function. Well, we've been given the price function here, so we're going to multiply by 250 minus 0.01x. Now, if we simplify this by distributing the x, we get 250x minus 0.01x squared. So there's going to be our revenue function. We can go ahead then and plug this revenue function that we found for r of x, plug that in right here. We also have this cost function that we've been given. We can go ahead and plug that in here in order to generate a function for profit. So here our profit function p of x is going to be equal to revenue. So we already found that 250x minus 0.01x squared minus the cost function. Now we have to be really careful here because we have to distribute this negative sign across everything in the cost function. So what we want to do is say minus and then in parentheses put our cost function. So 1000 plus 25 X and you can see this negative sign is going to turn both of these terms negative. So when we distribute that negative sign we'll get 250 X minus 0.01 X squared minus 1000 minus 25x. Now if we want to combine like terms and reorder the terms here, we'll get negative 0.01x squared. 250x minus 25x is going to be 225x, and then we're going to have minus 1,000. Now we have a function for profit. It's already in terms of one variable, so at this point we can go ahead and generate a function for the derivative of the profit function. So whatever we're asked to maximize or minimize, that's what we're going to need a function for. We just found a function for profit. Once you find this function and you've got it simplified here, your next step is always going to be to take the derivative of this function. So we'll call the derivative of the profit function p of x, we'll call it p prime of x, and when we take the derivative of the right hand side here, we'll bring this exponent down in front, so 2 times a negative 0.01 is going to give us a negative 0.02x 
plus 225 as the derivative of 225x. The derivative of negative 1,000 is zero because the derivative of any constant is zero. So this is gonna be our derivative function. Your next step is gonna to be to set this derivative function equal to zero always because what we're gonna to try to do now is find critical points of the function, which we do by setting the derivative equal to zero and solving for the variable. So we'll go ahead and add 0.02x to both sides. We'll get 0.02x equals 225. Then when we divide both sides by 0.02, we get x is equal to 11,250 because 225 divided by 0.02 is 11,250. So now we have this value for x. It's a potential critical point, which means it's potentially a point at which the function changes direction from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. We need to use the first derivative test to verify whether or not this is in fact a critical point and more specifically, whether or not it's a local maximum such that we can say this is the value of x that maximizes profit. So once you find this value for x by setting the derivative equal to zero, what we wanna do is test this value using the derivative function. So what I like to do is go ahead and draw a simple number line here, it keeps things easy, so I have my number line. What I wanna do is put my potential critical point here, x equals 11,250 right in the center. So we'll just call this 11,250. We're gonna be testing this in the derivative function that we found before, so that's p prime of x. I always go ahead and write p prime here to remind myself that I'm testing this value in the derivative function, p prime of x. What I wanna do then is pick a value on either side of 11,250. I'll just go ahead and pick 11,200 and 11,300. These are the two values that I'm gonna be testing. So what I wanna do then is plug each of these values, the one on the left and the one on the right, into the derivative function p prime of x. So what we would do then is say p prime of 11,000 200 and we would plug that into the derivative function. So we would get negative 0.02 times 11,200 plus 225. And what's important is not necessarily the exact value of this, but whether or not this value is positive or negative. And if we do this arithmetic here, what we see is that this value is positive. Then we wanna test the other value, 11,300, and we'll say p prime of 11,000 300 is gonna be equal to negative 0.02 times 11,300 plus 225. And if we do that arithmetic, what we see is that we get a negative value. So what that tells us is that the derivative function is positive on the left-hand side of x equals 11,250 and negative on the right-hand side of x equals 11,250. So what we can say then is positive, negative. So that means the derivative is positive, the derivative is negative. When the derivative is positive, the original function is increasing. When the derivative is negative, the original function is decreasing. So that's why we draw this increasing line and this decreasing line. So we have increasing and decreasing, and then visually here we can see that because the original function is increasing and decreasing, x equals 11,250 must be a local maximum or the value that maximizes profit. So we've shown that this value maximizes profit, but once we've figured that out, we always have to go back to our question to make sure that we answer the question that we're being asked because we haven't always necessarily been asked for just the value of x that maximizes profit. We may have been asked for something else. So in this case, find the production level and the sale price that maximize profit. So production level is how many gadgets the company produces. This this problem assumes that the company is going to sell every gadget that it produces, so we're going to call the production level X. They create X gadgets, they sell X gadgets at this price function, this cost function, so the production level then is going to be X equals 11,250 gadgets. They're going to make 11,250 gadgets. And then we've been asked for the sale price. Well, the sale price, the price, is given by this function P of X equals 250 minus 0.01X. So if we plug x equals 11,250 into this p of x function here, we get p of 11,250 is equal to 250 minus 0.01 times 11,250. And when we do the math here, what we get is 137.5. So we can say 137 
50 because we were told that p of x, the price function, is in dollars per gadget. So what we can say then is that the price that maximizes profit is a price of 137.50 per gadget, assuming that the company makes 11,250 gadgets, that that's its production level. These two numbers together are the numbers that are going to maximize profit for the company.